Hi, so welcome to the live stream today as we continue with our discussion towards the December 2022 examination. Hi, so welcome to the live stream today. Give me a moment. Let's see if I as we continue all right so welcome to the stream today really excited to have you on the stream as we continue yes, we with our discussion for the august 20 did i say august again? all right so welcome to december 2022 really uh examination as we try to uh, look at a few things that we need to look out for. Today, I'm focusing on the accounting standards. Now, if you're a student writing financial reporting and the corporate reporting right. examination, uh, look at a few things that we need to look out for. Today. Looking at uh, writing financial reporting and corporate reporting, one of the things that are, uh, that is very important is the accounting standards. Uh, financial reporting is a done deal. You're going to have 40 mark questions minimum relating to the accounting standards. What does that mean? It means that you're going to have a dedicated 20 mark questions questions on the standards, dedicated 20 mark questions on the standard, then the single entity financial statements. Maybe you're supposed to prepare the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, the statement of financial position, as well as the statement of changes in equity or the cash flow statement. That is also going to be 20 marks and that is also premised on the accounting standards. If there's somebody doing corporate reporting, then it means that you need to understand the accounting standards also very well because the examiner is going to be having a minimum of 30 mark questions, all other things being equal, 25 marks dedicated uh, questions on the standards, then a five marks theory uh, also or written or comments question that examiner will throw at you. But also you need to understand the standards well because the examiner will bring you uh, details or may bring you details relating to the notes on the preparation of the consolidated financial statement, which is the question one. And to treat a couple of the notes there, you will need to have an understanding of the accounting standards. It is based on uh, this premise that we say that the accounting standards become then the pillar for the subject financial reporting and also corporate reporting. And today's discussion, I want to discuss with you and take you through this 40 mark area, the key standards that you need to focus on, be on the lookout for, but most importantly, how you can study the standards to increase your chances of passing the examination. Because it is not just about knowing the standards, but it is important to understand how you can learn or study the standards together to increase your chances of ultimately passing the examination. You have to understand that um, I, I have received this a lot from students. They are like, yeah, sure, the standards is difficult. You know, when you learn it, you learn it, you don't even know. Uh, there is a way you have to learn the standard. There is a way you need to structure your studies when it comes to the standards. And that is what we want to discuss this afternoon, focusing on these standards well. And if you're doing corporate reporting or financial reporting, or you know someone doing these subjects, make sure you share this video with the person because you will be helping the person and preparing the person for a 40 mark area coming into the exam hall. Imagine the 40 marks relating to the standards. We give you the guidelines, we give you the blueprints so that you'll be able to get 30, 35. It's possible. It's possible. I've, I tell people this that the accounting standards are not difficult to be understood. 
there is a way you have to learn them. There is a way you have to know about the standards. When you do that, you then position yourself to pass the examination. And that is what I want to share with you today on the stream. I see some of you guys joining. You are welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video. It will really help us because it makes us get more engagement on the video. And YouTube and Facebook will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. But most importantly, comment in the comment section or the chat box. Let me hear from you where you are watching us from. And if you have any questions also, you can send them to us and we'll be able to provide you with some answers. Remember that we have launched a new uh, way to be able to mentor you and provide you with more assistance so you can prepare well for the exams and pass the examination. So starting from today, you can send us a short uh, video of questions that you have. So probably you are studying uh, and uh, there is something you don't understand and you want some clarity on, on them. You can just send a short video via WhatsApp uh, to the number on your screen, 0548, sorry, 0545. Uh, 887564, 0545 887564. Uh, so you send the short video of your question via WhatsApp. Please note that I'm going to be answering these questions in video. So your video will be featured on all our platforms. It will be on YouTube, it will be on Instagram, it will be on Facebook, it will be on Twitter, it will be on LinkedIn, it will be on our mobile application, it will be on our website, it will be on our podcast streaming platform. So it's going to be everywhere. So I just want to uh, make that aware for you so that for some of you who, if you're not really comfortable being seen, you know, you got to package yourself a little bit very well so that, you know, you know you'll be in public. So if there are any questions that you have, you send it to us. Just record yourself a short video describing what you have problem with. And then once you send it on WhatsApp, I'm going to be receiving then we will make a video to try to answer that question to assist you. This is what we are also adding uh, this semester to really mentor you, hold your hand, and also provide you uh, the assistance that you need so you can pass the examination. Like I say always, my objective, my goal for you is that you will go into the exam hall and write the exams with confidence, but most importantly, when the results come, you'll be able to pass the exams. And it, that can only happen in three things. You need a mentorship, you need to discipline yourself, then you can become excellent at what you do. And so you send us your questions and we'll be able to provide you with some assistance uh, with that. I see some comments coming in. Let's see if I can uh, take some of them real quick on the chat. Let's see, who do we have here? I see Deborah Boatin said, what is the price per course in level one? It's for our courses are 430 Ghana cities per paper across all level, 430 Ghana cities per paper. We are starting with our live lectures on Monday, uh, that is 5th of September 2022. However, we'll be having our orientation session on Sunday uh, in that case. And your enrollment give you access to a lot of things. But for level one, we are yet to confirm um, tuition and content for that. So pretty by Saturday, we'll be able to conclude on that and communicate that are various on the various platforms we have so henry said hi shira uh, i would like to know if you have some sessions for cpa exams uh it depends you can send us a message on whatsapp scroll uh, the message scrolling below uh, the screen and send us a message on whatsapp we will look at your course structure and if you can uh have a private session We'll be able to provide you with assistance on that. Note that uh, private session with me starts at 3,800 Ghana CDs per paper. So if you are coming for a private session with me, it starts at 3,000 Ghana CDs per paper. And that will give you uh, access to, you know, have me mentor you privately at your own time and uh, also provide you with some other benefits to be able to prepare well for your examination. Rose D said, I just subscribed. Thank you, Rose. Come on, man. You guys, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Rose, thanks for subscribing. Henry said, Henry from Tanzania. All right. Thanks for joining us, Henry. Uh, Len Ascent from South Africa. Thank you, South Africa. Shout outs to South Africans. Um, who do we have here? Kufans Network said, this is my first time watching. I'm holding HND, IC, and top up. Which one should I do? Okay, you are holding HND and you're thinking about ICAG and top up. Do ICAG, all right? 
because if you do the top up, you will finish and come and do ICAG again. So go for ICAG, all right? So uh, Kufas Network, I will advise you go and do you do ICAG. Um, with your HND, you will get an exemption from level one, get exemption, uh, two papers exemption also, I think, in level two. Uh, and then you write the rest of the four papers. And within a year, you can become a chartered accountant. Within a year. You can become a chartered accountant because now papers are written three times a year. Hence, if you write or you sit and pass all the exams, that means that you can become a chartered accountant within a year. Can you imagine that? And it's possible. I know some of you to be way outside the blue for you guys, but it is possible. But that will require three things. Like I say always, it will require some mentorship. It will require you to have some discipline very well so that you can then excel to become successful. But it's possible. Do ICAG. Don't go and do top up. Do ICAG instead. Niger TV said, thanks, sir, for the good work you're doing. I'm a wisdom from Nigeria. Thank you, wisdom, for joining us. Samuel J said, no, Samuel, I reject. Sorry. I am happy to catch you, to cut up with you uh, live class today. With your live class today your lectures have been so helpful you are wonderful i am your regular fan here in nigeria thank you very much samuel god bless you too uh deborah said please can you explain how the online mentorship will be like i want to register for december and i'm reading accounting first year i want to start any advice for me yeah uh our online classes comes along with um joining our live you know sessions definitely so you'll be able to join our live lectures via zoom you get access to uh, our live practice questions as well on our online portal you get access to our examination analysis document you study directly under my mentorship as well as our training experience lecturers available and then you also join our executive revision master class all our live lectures are held via zoom and uh Past first time is guaranteed, subject to terms and conditions, because that will require you to work a little harder. In level one, you are K and USD. I think I've addressed this for you uh, before. Uh, you can start with two papers, accounting, financial accounting, and then business law. I mean, going with these two papers, probably in December, will put you in the spot to be able to uh, pass the examination. So you can do two, two. But if you have the capacity also, you can take the four. But remember, um, that will require a lot of time. Like I say, there's always, please don't bundle the papers and try to write six papers at the go, four papers at the go. No. If you are busy, do two, two projects. Do two projects. Do two, some, some even do just one. Uh, because sometimes in the ICSMs, you cannot register for one paper. So they will register for the two anyways, but they will just focus on one and then go and write. Then they pass. Go and write. Then they pass. Go and write. Then they pass. So go with a flow that will help you to be able to really pass the exams as easy as possible because if you care is not taken and you fail the exam more than once people become discouraged i've been doing this since 2013 so i'm close to a decade in teaching this i did this whole i see it in acc again so i've seen students discouraged a lot some people have written the paper they're like yo what do i have to do again so they will stop and go and sell beans and uh yeah they don't want to chatter again so you don't want to, you know, go through that experience or have bad experience. So go at your own pace, spend some time, discipline yourself, and then you can do it, Deborah. Then uh, what else do we have? Hi, thank you for your explanation from Sri Lanka. Okay, thank you for joining us. Matthew said, thanks so much. Your videos on IFRS have really helped me in the last examination. Copy reporting was just like ABCD for me. I really murdered it. Whoa. <laughs> That's great to hear. Corporate reporting was A, B, C, D for you. Awesome. We thank God that our channel is able to, you know, provide you with the mentorship and the assistance that you require to be able to really, really go in there and, and pass the examination. That is my goal. That's my objective for this channel. And that is why we will continue to provide you with the contents that you need in order for you to become uh, successful. So if there are any questions, you know what to do. Drop it in the chat. I want to hear from you guys. And also, if there are any things you want me to share my thought on, then you can uh, also put it in the, in the chat. Remember, like I said, from today, you can send us your video 
messages if you have a question and you want me to answer the question uh you can send you can record yourself a short video using your selfie camera or whatever a short video you send it to us on whatsapp zero uh five four five eight eight seven five six four if you're outside ghana that would be plus two three three so you send the video on whatsapp remember that the video will be featured on all our platforms online so uh you'll be mindful of that i don't want any privacy issue Somebody saying that, hey, you have put my video online and uh, people are looking at me. Please, I don't want a problem. So if you note that if you are sending me the questions, I'm going to be featuring it on our platforms and you're going to be seen across the world as well. Okay, so let's get excited into today's discussion and uh, let's see what I can do uh, for us today. Let's see, let me bring this guy up. Okay, we go. So the accounting standards. 40 marks in the exam hall. Financial reporting, corporate reporting, 40 marks. <laughs> 40 marks. How do we go about it? How do we learn it? What are the key standards to focus on? That is what I want us to get into in a moment. So let me bring up my screen and uh, let's get excited about it. And let's get excited about it. Uh, let's get excited about it. If it appears my sound is a little bit echoing today. I don't know. Is my sound okay? Can someone help me out in the chat? Is my sound okay? When I when I play back myself here, yeah, I feel my sound is echoing, but I don't know. Is my sound okay? Let me know. Those of you guys watching us live, let me know if my sound is okay at your end or. I'm just smelling some echoing, echoing, echoing. I don't know. So let me know if my sound is okay for for you. Okay, so IFRS, the accounting standards. The accounting standards. Okay, so Abdullah Mazuk said, yeah, it's okay. All right, thank you. And then Samuel said, it's okay. Okay, thanks. Let's go. So the accounting standards. Please listen carefully to me. This is 40 marks. 40 marks. And so I want you to listen carefully, take notes, and structure yourself very well to be able to pass the examination. You see, there are a lot of accounting standards here. And I don't want you to look at the list of the accounting standards and say, oh, Mishira, um, the accounting standards are a lot, and uh, it's challenging to study them. Instead, what I want you to do is to look at the accounting standards like twinnies. In other words, look at them like Siamese twins. In other words, they are related to each other. They are connected to each other. They, they are not independent on their own. Most of the accounting standards actually relates to each other. So number one is, what are the key standards you need to focus on? What are the key standards? So let's look at the key standards you need to focus on. Then we'll jump into how you can uh, study the standards together in order to increase your chances for pass of passing the examination. So what are the key standards we're going? Number one, it's going to be the OG, and that is IAS 16, property plans and equipment. Now, when you are learning property plans and equipment, don't look at it as property plans and equipment because property plans and equipment is not on its own. In other words, there are a couple of standards that are connected to IAS 16. So before you conclude and say, oh, now I understand IAS 16, note that it is connected with other standards. So I'm going to get into that in a moment. Number two, IFRS 9, financial instruments. IAS 16, IFRS 9, financial instruments. Number three, IAS 12, income tax. For financial reporting people, this is done deal. You can't go anywhere and leave it. Corporate reporting people, this is done deal. You need a principle in other standards. And I'm going to explain this to you in a moment. So stay with me. So IAS 16, IFRS 9, financial instruments, IAS 12, income tax very very important there ifrs 15 revenue from contracts with customers 
revenue from contracts with customers, revenue from contracts with customers, you need to understand that standard as well. So IAS 16, IFRS 9, IAS 12, IFRS 15, revenue from contract with customers. Now remember, I am providing you with this blueprint for December 2022. In other words, what do we expect the examiner and how we expect the examiner to structure the question? And I'm gonna be providing you with blueprints later on, especially in detail, for those of you who are enrolled in our financial reporting or corporate reporting class, we'll be doing this in our main class and I'll provide you with more detail. But, but here I'm gonna provide you just with some general overview. So IAS 16, IFRS 9 financial instruments, IAS 12 income tax. Now you need it. If you are doing financial reporting, you don't, you can't excuse yourself from income tax. If you are doing financial reporting, you can't excuse yourself from IAS 16. You must know it. IAS 12 income tax, you must know it. If you have to put your feet in cold water, hot water, you have to swim up. You have to know income tax in detail. <laughs> in detail, it's very, very important. So you must know these standards very well. So we need IAS 16, we need IFRS 9, we need IAS 12, we need IFRS 15 revenue from contract with customers. But this is where the journey gets interesting. When you are learning IAS 16, please stay with me carefully, property plant and equipment. There are two broad issues that you need to look out for, two broad issues. That is the initial measurement, the initial measurement and subsequent measurement. Initial measurement and subsequent measurement. Stay with me carefully. So when you are doing IAS 16, Yes, you are learning IAS 16 though, but you must understand the initial measurement and the subsequent measurement. Initial measurement and the subsequent measurement. So why? Because under initial measurement, two standards you have to learn in addition to IAS 16 when you are learning it. And that is IAS 12, sorry, IAS 37, provisions, contingent assets and contingent liabilities, IAS 37. So so when initial measurement of assets, you are looking at initial recognition of tangible non-current assets, you must know IAS 37 because you have to learn it in addition to know that because as the IAS 16, property, plant and equipment, the initial cost of the asset shall include uh, the purchases cost or the cost of manufacturing and all other directly attributable costs to be incurred or incurred to bring the asset to its present use. And part of these directly attributable costs are future environmental or dismantling costs. And the way you account for those future environmental or dismantling costs will be through IAS 37, provisions, contingent liabilities, contingent assets. But not only that, sometimes entities are going to be uh borrowing money to either acquire assets or build assets so maybe you're dealing with qualifying assets hence you are going to be looking at ias 23 borrowing cost sounds good so so when you're learning ias 16 property plant and equipment and you get to initial measurement of property plant and equipment you must identify that ias 37 where does it fit IAS 23, borrowing cost, where does it fit? How do we account for it? Because like I said, the accounting standards are like a CME stories. They are connected to each other. They are related. They are attached by something. They share something together. So you don't look at them in isolation. So that is the initial measurement situation. On the subsequent measurement from what is going to be happening there on subsequent measurement is that we're going to be having also a standard there relating to impairment. So impairment of assets, and that will be IAS 36. So on the subsequent measurement, we need impairment, IAS 36, very important. Not only that, on subsequent measurements, when assets are revalued, there will be deferred tax implication. 
So we need income tax, IAS 12, to know the deferred tax implication. Are you following the picture here very well? So you must know where the standard fits in the discussion in general. It's not that you just say, oh, I'm learning IAS 12. Oh, I'm learning IAS 36. Oh, I'm learning IAS 37. Where does it fit in the scope of all the standards? Are you getting the idea? That is what we're talking about here. Where does it fit in the scope of the standards? Where does it fit in the scope of the standards? So on subsequent measurement, you need impairment of assets because assets may suffer impairment. You have to know how to account for uh, impairment of assets. You need deferred tax because uh, assets will be revalued and there will be deferred tax, asset deferred tax liabilities. You must know how to account for them. So what are you seeing so far? You realize that there is IS 16 though, but other standards are coming in. Number three, in subsequent measurement also, there is a connection that IAS 16 has with IAS 40, investment property. Ooh, investment property, investment property. So there is a connection that it has. So you must also know when we change a property plant and equipment into investment property, how do we account for it? When we change an investment property to a, a property plant and equipment, how do we account for it? It is crucial you understand that. Then let's come again to the initial measurement aspect. Even here, you need to understand IAS 20, government grants. Because on the initial measurement, when an, an entity acquires an asset and the entity receives a government grant, there are two methods that the entity can use to account for the government grant. They can either use the write down approach or the deferred income approach. When the entity uses the write down approach, that means that the government grant received will reduce the initial cost of the asset. And on subsequent measurement, you account for that in that regard. So as part of initial measurement also, there could be government grant issue that may be in the question. So when you're learning IAS 16, you got to draw the connection. You got to draw the connection because it is going to be very, very important. It's going to be very, very important. So in the initial measurement, we're looking at IAS 37. We're looking at IAS 23. We're looking at government grants. In the subsequent measurement, we are looking at impairment of assets, IAS 36, deferred tax, income tax, IAS 12, and then IAS 40, investment property, because probably the entity is transferring an asset that is being used uh, into a, a non-owner occupied asset or vice versa. And you must know how to account for it. I, I hope you see the way we, we're dealing with this. So, so that is how you learn the standards. You don't just write your timetable that and say, hey, today I'm learning IAS 16. No, no bro. You, you, you got you, you to gotta bring the feeling together. You got to combine the standards. You got to understand the way the standards fit naturally. And it will take you a certain level of understanding to naturally fit it or to know how to fit this into the transactions generally and and this is why uh you know this is why i teach the standards the way i teach it if you go on our study portal if you enroll in any of courses and join our main class sessions you realize the way we solve these uh we deal with these standards together and the way we solve questions together because that is how you actually increase your chances of passing the examination. So that is just about IAS 16. That's just about IAS 16. So key standards. Number one, IAS 16. But what am I saying? When you're learning IAS 16, note that there is initial measurement and there is subsequent measurement. At the initial measurement stage, note that there are three standards that connect with IAS 16, IAS 37, IAS you know, 23, IS 20. On the subsequent measurement, at most, we can have, or at least, we can have impairment, we can have deferred tax coming in from IAS 12, and we can have investment property. So this is how you learn the standards together. And, and let me tell you this. When you're able to, you know, be thought the standards this way, 
the, the standards become really lively because you, you end up enjoying and appreciating the standards because you realize that, oh, okay, these guys are not on their own. They are interrelated, they are interconnected, and they make they bring the standards into to life to enable you to be able to really prepare to pass the examination. So that's the IAS 16. We need financial instruments. We need IFRS uh, 15, revenue from contracts with customers as well. Key standards, key standards. Now, for the people doing corporate reporting, let me give you something here. So this is for corporate reporting students. But stay with me, financial reporting students, because we are not done. If you're doing corporate reporting students, take note of this. You have to ensure that you are strong in IFRS 9. I've already said that financial instrument. You must ensure that you are strong in IFRS 2, share-based payments, very important. Remember that when you are doing share-based payments, he has a brother. And the brother of share-based payment is deferred tax. So there's going to be IAS 12 because there is deferred tax in share-based payment. No relationship there. Then IAS 19, employee benefits. You must know these standards very well. You must know these standards very well. Then there is IFRS 8, the operating segment. IFRS 8, the operating segment. You must understand these bits. Now, this is level three exclusive. Okay, this is level three. So, before, if you are doing corporate reporting, before you get into the exam hall, you can't have anything than not understanding these standards I've listed here. Because these are level three exclusive as well. Now, remember, financial reporting is in FR as well, but in level three, it's also a basic standard corporate reporting students that you have to be my follow -up. very basic standards that you have to be mindful of because it is very important because it is very important because it is very important so copper reporting these are the standards very very important now once we established these standards there are other standards that we need to also be mindful of. Again, still about IAS 16, the knowledge of IAS 16, property plans and equipment, will help you to understand IAS investment property. I've mentioned this a moment ago. It also will help you to understand IAS 38, intangible assets, because they're, they're, the rules will cut across with just some, uh, with just a little exception uh, in that case. Because when you're dealing with the investment property, the initial measurement uh, is going to be the same. The recognition criteria is almost the same. Subsequent measurements, the rules are the same. If you're dealing with intangible assets also, the, the rules generally are the same, only that we'll pay attention to certain things like development cost, uh, research and expense, research expenditure, uh, uh, goodwill, and other items, but the rules generally will be the same on subsequent measurements, initial measurement, depreciation, amortization, and those things may be applicable generally. So your knowledge in IAS 16 will also cut across a little bit into IAS 40 investment property and IAS 38 intangible assets. So you realize that the standards are not on their own now. So if you look at the list so far, you realize that just talking about IAS 16, we are connected with one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven standards here. Now, we're not done. We're not done. Because on subsequent measurements, another standard that connects with IAS 16 will be non-current asset held for sale and discontinued operation. That's IFRS 5 held for sale and discontinued operation IFRS 5 because on subsequent measurements non-current assets may be treated as held for sale and there is a recognition criteria and the way they must be accounted for in the books of the entity there's a way they must be accounted for in the books of the entity so IFRS 5 non-current asset held for sale you have to also know that because that also applies in the subsequent measurement any questions, please, I see some of you guys joining us on YouTube. 
give us a thumbs up on the video it really helps us a lot if you are getting some benefits remember to also share the video let's reach as many students as possible but most importantly let me hear from you in the comment section any questions you have for me put it in the chat let me hear from you and let's see if we can answer your questions very well on the stream very well on the stream So that is about that. Now, aside these standards that I've listed here and the way you learn them together, and this cuts across. I'm seeing a question about uh, ACCA here. I think Rose D has uh, answered you. Any as tips for ACCA students? I don't know what they are studying in ACCA, Sellers, Essen. What are you studying in ACCA? If you give me subject specific, probably I can provide you with some strategy. But if you are writing financial reporting or strategic business reporting, then this tips I'm giving you, <laughs> it's done deal because it applies there also. If you are doing financial reporting in the ACCA or doing strategic business reporting, also in ACCA, the final paper uh, there. Now, so aside these standards and the way they are connected with a level three exclusivity, here, there are other standards that you need to also be mindful of. Now, these standards are a little bit on their own. And so when you are learning them, you can learn them quote unquote on their own. And they are not, they are direct, they are straightforward, they are not that uh, complex in that particular case. So there are other standards, and I'm going to explain to you how you can, you can learn those other standards in a moment. So we have the IAS2 inventory. We have the IAS8 accounting policies, changes in estimated errors. We have IAS10 events after the reporting period. We have IAS33 and in special. We have IFRS 16 leases. Now, last time in the financial reporting exams, I think I discussed this with you uh, last week as well in the discussion. Uh, there was a question on leases, and uh, you, you remember that when they are letting leases, it has a relationship with this standard. There is an IFRS, you know, nine implication there. There is an IFRS. So these three standards have some relationship. These three standards have some relationship. It's very, very important for you to understand the relationship that exists between these three standards. Because um, when we do sale and lease back, and it will come in because of the topic or the subtopic sale and lease back. So when an entity has a building and they sell it and they're able to rearrange with a supposed purchaser and lease it back, we would have to find out whether performance obligation has been satisfied in accordance with IFRS 15. If performance obligation has been satisfied in accordance with IFRS 15, then the sale is actually a sale. And so the asset will be derecognized and then we will account for the lease as per IFRS 16. But if the performance obligation has not been satisfied as per IFRS 15, that means the transaction is a financial arrangement. Are you getting it? With the asset being used as a collateral facility. For that reason, the entity will recognize a financial liability and account for it in accordance with IFRS 9 financial liability. I hope you are getting the picture. So again, when you are learning leases, IFRS 16, IFRS 9 must be on your mind. IFRS 15 must be on your mind because the rules there will be connected. Are, are you getting it? The rules there will be connected. The rules there will be connected. So these are the issues that you must understand generally about these. So these are the other standards that you need to uh, look out for generally uh, in that particular. There are other standards like agriculture, uh, there, that is IFRS. What is agriculture? I, that's IFRS something. I've forgotten that one. <laughs> Let me see if I can 
check it, get, get it from my slide here. Agriculture should be something, something. Let's see if we can find it in my book. IFRS. What is agriculture? Somebody knows that, you can put it in the comments for me as I wait on my document here. I think I'm almost there as well. Yeah, agriculture is IS41. That's also there. It goes with the inventory situation. IS41. That's also another uh, standard that you need to understand. I'm showing you this from my uh, book there. So I've listed all the standards that you need. To. IS21 effects of foreign exchange transaction. That's also there. Effects of foreign exchange transaction. Then we have IS24, related party transaction, RTP. So these are the other standards that you must understand. These are the other standards that you must understand. Very, very important. So, so what am I trying to say? This is it. If you want to start learning the standards, how do you generally go about it? So let's be specific here. If you are doing financial reporting, we have already established that in the exam hall, you will need IAS 16. No matter what it is, in the exam hall, you will need the knowledge on IAS 16. In the exam hall, you will need the knowledge on IAS 12. No matter how it is, you will need the knowledge of IAS 12. Then, you will also need the knowledge coming in from IFRS 9. That is not fully determined every semester, but uh, most of the time, the examiner would want to bring that up because it, it, it has become really traditional. But this is the deal. When we say you need the knowledge of IAS 16, the reason we are saying that is because of the two things I did here. That maybe the examiner will bring a question on provision, but it is about a tangible current asset. So you have to apply both IAS 16 and IAS 37. Maybe the question is on borrowing costs. So you have to apply again IAS 16 and IAS 23. Maybe the question is on government grants. So, and so you have to apply both IAS 16 and IAS 20. Maybe the question is about impairment. You may have to apply IAS 16 and IAS 36. Maybe the question is about tax, but then it's a tax, but you need to apply the principle of IAS 16 and IAS 12. So that is the deal. So it means that even though we are, you must understand IAS 16, you must understand it in light of the related standards. You must understand it in light of the related standards. Are we getting the picture? You must understand it in light of the standards. That's how you position yourself to pass the examination. That's how you position yourself to pass the examination. That's the only way you go to pass the examination. So you position yourself that way, then boom, you can pass the exams. Then these are the standards. Like I mentioned here, like I mentioned here, when you are doing leases, you have to be mindful of IFRS 9. You have to be mindful of IFRS 15. When? When you get to sale and lease back. You have to know when the standard comes in. Because that is in the exam hall, you see, I don't want you to get to the exam hall, you read a question and it takes you longer to process the question. Immediately you read a question, the principle should drop in your mind, then you can apply the principle quickly. Quickly. So when you are learning IFRS 16, leases, when immediately you get to IFRS, that you get to sell and lease back, you have to remember that IFRS 9 and IFRS 15, their principles will be called on. And the same thing applies when you're doing IFRS 9 financial instruments. When you're doing IFRS 9 financial instruments, the principle of IFRS 16 and IFRS 5, IFRS 15 
will be called on. Why? Because the standards are related. The standards are related. So with leases, immediately you get to sell a lease back, remember to call on these. With uh, IFRS 9, immediately you get into uh, financial liability. Then IFRS 16, the principal there may come in. Because if we borrow money, or uh, we sell our assets and lease it back, and, and performance obligation has not been satisfied, then we have to account for it as financial liability and not as a leases in accordance with IFRS 16. It's very important. It's very important. Then, level three students corporate reporting. You must understand these standards. IFRS 9 financial instruments, IFRS 2 share based payments. Remember, when you're doing share based payment, there's a deferred tax on share based payments. Don't forget. Now, the reason I'm trying to emphasize on some of these things is that, like I showed you last week in our discussion, the financial reporting paper, for instance, Act 2022, okay, this is management accounting. The financial reporting paper, there was a four-mark question that required students to use both the principles of IFRS 9 and IFRS, you know, um 16. All right, I have various nine and I have various 16 because it was a sale and lease back. Okay, it says I think it's a six marks question here in that particular case. Yeah, because it was a six marks question here. The I question two I six marks question. So you are supposed to use the principle of leases with IFRS 15, whether the performance obligation has been what satisfied. And so that is where those relationship come in. And that's how the question will be said. So you read a question, your head has done, your, your head, the, the, the question has plenty in your head and you don't know where to start from. No, it's because you are weak in the standards. Then certainly employee benefits. You don't want to forget that with three students. Uh, as well because it's crucial for you. Then OS, not Office of Special Prosecutor, but I mean, uh, operation segment or operational seg operating segment is also another standard that you need to understand. But you see, the examiner, it's likely to bring you a theory question on consolidation. So when it comes to consolidated financial statement, there'll be a theory question. There may be a theory question. I don't know, let's see last semester, was there, was there any theory question on consolidation? Let me see. There was an ethics there. We'll look at ethics later on. Yeah, there was a five mark question on consolidation. Five marks. It's a theory question from IFRS 3, business combination. From IFRS 3, business combination. From IFRS 3, business combination. Five marks there. So when it comes to consolidated financial statements also, there are some standards that you have to be aware of. What I just mentioned, IFRS 3, business combination, IFRS 10, consolidated financial statement, IS 27, uh, separate financial statements uh, of entities there. So these standards, the examiner may bring some theory questions about them that you must know about. How do you determine control? How do you determine significant influence? We will get into some of these later on in our discussion as we continue with our uh, discussion. So these are the standards and how you learn the standards to increase your chances of passing the examination. So a mixture of these will be your 40 marks. Will be, you'll be your 40 marks. But, but now that we've known the standards, how they are interrelated, the question then is, how do you optimize yourself to get majority of the marks? Optimize. Because you see, it's one thing to know the standard. It's another thing to uh, understand the standard. Now, when we say knowing the standard, it means you know that, oh, okay, this standard, this question, I'm supposed to apply 37. But understanding the standard means knowing, uh, being able to apply the principle. So understanding has to do with application of the principle. 
So they are knowing and understanding is not the same thing as per my explanation here. So application of the principle, very important. So you know the standards, you uh, understand the principle and apply it. Now, so it's not enough to know, it's not enough to understand, but the next thing has to do with working with your ability to solve the question within record time. Okay, so time management. Because you see, some of you who wrote FR last semester, for instance, some of you wrote FR last semester, for instance, probably you failed the exams. If you sit down closely and you look at the questions, it's not that you couldn't do the question. If you look at the questions carefully, you realize that you could have done these questions. But why couldn't you do it? It's because of time. Before you knew it, you know, the time it was over. And they said, get ready to stop work. And you started panicking, and then that is why you failed the exams. So it is not enough to know the standards. It's not enough to understand the standards, but you have to be able to manage your time. So the question is, if we you finish going through the standards, you understand the principles, when you see the question, you know that, oh, I'm supposed to apply FRS 15 and then IFRS 9 in this question. I'm supposed to apply IAS 36 and IAS 16 in this question. I'm supposed to apply IAS 16 and IAS 14 in this question. Like, you know that. Can you work within the time given in the exam hall? That is the second thing. That is why you have to be mindful of this. And so what is going to be happening is this. To increase your chances of passing the examination, because this is 40 marks, 40 marks. To increase your chances of passing the examination, certainly you got to study the standards. Now, when I say study, I don't just mean study on your own. I mean, you got to attend the lectures and make sure that you are taught well to understand the standards because they are interesting if you understand them. But not only must you study the standards because, you know, you study the standards to, you know, have an understanding of the principle. Understanding the principles. But that is not enough. You need to practice questions. But you see, practicing questions here, what I mean here is that it will help you to understand the various scope of the standard and also helps you to understand the possible questions the examiner can ask you. So how much is too much? As many as you can do. As many, as many, as many. That is why as part of our program here, uh, what we do is that we have a question kit available that has a lot of questions in there. And you're going to get access to other questions as well as we go. So when it comes to every standard, there is a question there. There are now a lot of questions there. And we modify this every semester to include other questions as well. And you're going to be giving some other materials as well. So once you finish with a standard, you can then come in here and try to, you know, open a question up. So maybe you've done government grants, IAS 20. So you come Grant. There are various questions on government grants. Various questions. You can see additional questions here on government grants. How government grants relates to IAS 16 and how the government grant is also on its own. So you are practicing after studying, attending lectures, your lecturer teaching you, you need to practice questions so that you can understand the scope. Because you see, what happens is that normally in class, the, the, what the lecturers try to do on the average is to try to, you know, show you what the standard is. And time will not permit the lecturer to really go through every detailed thing. So you need to then create time on your own to practice questions. Again, this is why in our program, as part of our program, we have our performance evaluation test. We have assignments programs coming in. Because during performance evaluation tests and assignments, we get to understand and know whether students really understand what the standards and you also will be able to test yourself. That is why one of the rules here, one of the conditions here is if you don't participate in the performance evaluation test and you don't do the assignments and you don't have any solid reason for not doing it, 
when we are discussing it, you will not be part of the discussion. Because that is how you pass the exam. It's a mentorship program. And that is one of our key terms and conditions. That is one of our key terms and conditions. So, because that is how you pass the exam, you must understand the scope and then the possible areas. Now, after you practice a number of questions, generally from, you know, this book or any at the ICA question kit and others, you need to be, you need to put yourself on a time tested area. So you got to get access to some, you know, live practice questions. Live practice questions. Now, wh why the live practice question? Because live practice question will have the time available. So the purpose of the live practice question, and that is again what we are doing, we are introducing this semester in our program. So if you realize in our program, one of the things that we mentioned is you get access, the second point there, you get access to live practice questions online. So on our online portal, after you finish with a topic, you're going to have live questions coming in. Why do you need that live question? Because the clock will be ticking within time so you can think on your feet literally all right because you see like i said if we give you all the time in the world you may be able to do the work but the examination is three hours you have reading time of 15 minutes practically three hours you have three hours 15 minutes so you have to train yourself timely that is why this semester like I said, we are introducing that and adding that to our online portal. So when you enroll in our course, getting access to the live lectures, joining us live on Zoom, getting access to the recorded lectures, uh, getting access to our examination analysis documents, doing, being part of our executive revision masterclass, you also get access to this exclusive platform that enables you to time yourself whilst you go. So immediately you open a question, the clock is ticking. If, it is, if you're supposed to use two minutes, after two minutes, boom, it goes away. After two minutes, boom, it goes away. Why? So that you can mentally, consciously, try to in your in such a way you can think as early as quickly. Now, when you this a period of time, when the exam hall, it becomes easier because the minute you read the question, your brain will be clicking the clock and boom, you'll be able to answer the question as, as possible. So how do you put yourself in the position to get majority of the marks on the standards? You have to study. The study here is in twofold. You've got to attend lectures and study as well on your own. Like I said, when you attend lectures on the average, the lecturer is not going to uh, finish everything. There are some part of the standards that, based on the lecturer's discretion, he will not cover or she may not cover. And because of time, he may not cover or she will not cover. So you have to sit down and learn the, part, the rest of the standards. That is why I recommend to everybody to make sure you have the ICA syllabus by yourself. And I tell my students this also. Have the ICA syllabus by yourself to know what you are learning, the scope of the syllabus, because some of you get to the exam hall and there is a question and you don't even know where the question came from because you didn't hear it anyway. But you attend the lectures. Yeah, because if you had referred to the syllabus, you would have known that the, 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 the thing is not over. You have to learn more. And so one of the things I do is I tell my students, right from section one, I tell my students, hey, listen, my time is limited. I cannot teach you A, B, C, D in detail in class. You can watch the video on this on our portal if you have questions you ask. Because that is it. The timing availability will not be able to help the lecturer to finish the syllabus 100%. So you have to put that on your own to do some of the study by yourself. And that is why we have the recorded lectures on our portal. We have the recorded lectures on our portal. So the things that we will not cover in class in detail, the recorded videos are there. And that is why you need discipline and watch the playback. And if you have any questions, you raise it up and then you will be assisted because nowhere will the syllabus be completed. 
it won't be completed. That is the reality of the thing. No way. So I tell my students right from section one, I said, hey, listen, I cannot teach you these standards in class because of timing purposes. Go. The lecture videos are on the portal. Watch the lecture videos, solve the questions, if there are issues, raise it up, and you'll be assisted. And, and that is what you need to understand. That the honors lies on you. It is your life. Okay? The honors lies on you. It is your life. The fact that you paid fees to attend lectures does not mean necessarily the lecturer will, give, will you know, finish everything that has to be finished. So the honors lies on you. So you have to on yourself. Have the syllabus. This is the ICA syllabus. If you don't have it, you can download it on the ICA website. It's a free document. Or for those of you who are, who are on our WhatsApp platform, you can send her a WhatsApp. We'll send you the syllabus. Have the syllabus, the subject you are writing. Know the details of the syllabus. Know everything. But most importantly, know the key areas you have to focus on to increase your chances of passing the examination. So that as you're attending lectures, you are studying what you have to study on your own. Attending lectures, you are studying. So maybe you go, you attend, they've taught you IFRS 16, leases. But you come to the syllabus and you look at the scope of the book, you realize there is something the lecturer did not teach you. Does it mean you don't need it for the exams? No, it's important you, you look at it yourself because the lecturer may not have time to deal with it. And it's your life, not his life, not her life. It's your life. So you have to put the responsibility so you cover the syllabus by yourself. So you have to study, attend lectures, but also do private learning on your own or personal studies on your own. Now, for those of you who say, oh, Shira, you know, me, I'm a busy person. You know, I don't get time. And please, I've said this over and over again. If you are busy and you feel that your marriage, your children, and your work is important to you, go and continue with it. And don't frustrate yourself with the ICAG. Because sometimes the reason why people fail the exams it's because they don't have enough time to study. Because you have to study to pass the ICA exams. I told you this last week that the ICA exams is getting better and better. You know, the quality of the questions, the structure of the questions, it's getting better and better. I love it. Because that's, that's, that's what, now it is not about sitting down and solving some past questions. Then you go to the exam and voila, you pass. Mm -mm. You have to work. So please, how do you get majority of the 40 mark question relating to the standards? You have to study. Know the principles of it. But most importantly, you must know how to apply the principle. How do you do that? By practicing questions. Because the more questions you practice, you understand the scope of the syllabus, you'll be able to understand the possible questions that the examiner can set on those standards then number three, you need to have live practice questions with timer on it. With timer on it. You, you can pick any question at all. Then you put your own stop clock up. And then do, do that consciously. Then find out, are you able to work within time? Are you able to work within time? You have to do this over and over again to perfect the act. That is why I said the ICAG, if you are busy, your children, you are married, and you feel you don't have time, go and continue. We love you. You are the best mother in the world. You are the best employee of the world. You have what you have from your family, from, from your from your will make the IC challenging for you. You will write and you will fail. And you'll be like, oh, I see it's not fair. I see it's not fair. No. If you sit down and think through it carefully, you realize that you didn't do it. You didn't do it. To pass the exams, you need mentorship. But you got to discipline yourself. So make some time available. My goal is this, that once you now know the standards, and the way you learn the standards and how to pass the exams, you implement that. 
So you need to prepare a study plan. Okay, you need to prepare a study plan. Now, in case you don't know how to prepare a study plan, you can check the description of this video on YouTube. You will see how to prepare a study plan. You can click on that and watch the video on how to prepare a study plan on YouTube. The description of this video, I think the second link, you can watch how to prepare a study plan and prepare a study plan and make sure you discipline yourself to follow the study plan. Look at the standards I listed a lot. A lot. It means you have to start studying now. Right now. Don't wait one month to the exams and start being serious. You will fail. Don't wait two weeks to the exams and attend all manner of intervention classes. You will fail. That is the reality. You don't want to hear that. But that is the reality. You will fail. Because it is only the people who work hard will be rewarded. It's that same. How much hard work is hard work? Hard work means hard work. Hard work means hard work. So the grace of God is available for everybody. It's available to everyone. It's not limited. God's grace is there. But you have to work to make the grace work in your life. So that is what I want to share with you. These are the key standards. These are how you study the standards together. And most importantly, how you'll be able to get majority of the marks in the exam hall. My key takeaway for you is this, that have a steady plan, understand these key standards. The standards are interconnected. Attend lectures. lectures. You have private time study on your own. This part of, of question that time. If you please, I can guarantee you, you will enter the exam hall one time, boom, you will pass it. It's not magic. It's not it's not laying hands on you and impacting anything to you. It's about dedication, discipline, and hard work. And if you do that, you know, you will become successful. And that is why. If people don't do performance evaluation tests, if people don't do assignments in my class, when we are discussing that question, I suck you. That's it. Because it's not just about, yo, I have students, the money has come. No. Yeah, the money has come, but what value am I adding to you? I've got to, I've got to challenge you. I've got to change you. I've got to transform you. That's why it's a mentorship program. So if you don't do assignments, you don't do performance evaluation tests, count yourself out. Of the discussion of those questions because you cannot just be part of the group like that and no you have to consciously participate in everything that is how you become successful as soon as possible I get an introduction you can become a chartered accountant in a year if you're coming in with a degree maybe coming in with a master's you can finish like Six months, you are done. Because with masters, you have only public sector and the level three. So it means two sittings, you should be done. Is it difficult? No. Is it possible? Yes. Can it be done? Only one out of ten can do it. Why? Because the work required is a lot. And that is the hard truth. Like I tell you guys all the time. Yeah, it's good for me to have students. It's good for me to have a lot of money. It would be nice to have a lot of money in my account. I can buy my dream house. I can buy my dream car, drive around and chill. That's nice. I can take care of my wife and children. They will be good. But it's not just about the money. I need to challenge you so that you can. You have to achieve the dream as early as possible. That's my goal. You don't have to take three years to become a chartered accountant. Me neighbor. Five years to become a chartered accountant. And then, Why? You can do this in a record time if you discipline yourself. But because of laziness, you don't want to discipline yourself. And you give a lot of excuses. Oh, my children. Oh, my wife. Oh, my husband. Oh, my job. Oh, this. Oh, that. Yes, they are all important. But if you want to do this in record time and avoid the emotional trauma, you have to work extra hard. Some of you may be 
it will mean for a period of time, you I cannot teach you how to run your life. No, I'm not a life coach. I can't advise you how to run your life. Myself, I need somebody to advise me how to run my life. <laughs> but 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 it means that you may have to forego some friends, friends. You may have to forego events. Some of you, every weekend, you attend birthday, funeral, wedding. Every weekend. Every weekend. Are you an event ambassador? No. Dedicate some time for yourself, for your goal, for your dream. That's how you become successful. That's how you become successful. Any questions, please put it in the chat for me. I want to hear from you. Any questions for me? We're going to be concluding. Let me hear from you. Remember that you can in our courses online uh, right now at 4.30, Ghana Cities per paper. We are starting our lectures on Monday. Be able to join our live lectures via Zoom and study directly under my mentorship with a team here. You'll get access to our examination analysis document, very exclusive document that it, uh, will also be available this semester. You'll be able to also get access to our live practice questions so you can practice live questions under time and train yourself very well. Then you will be able to also join our executive revision masterclass on Saturdays and Sunday. That is six weeks after we start the lectures. Saturdays and Sundays we'll be meeting to just solve questions and deal with the problems that you may be uh, having or you have to assist you in order for you to become successful generally at the end of the day. And then definitely, if you work hard and discipline yourself, uh, your past first time is guaranteed because that comes with the terms and conditions. Because, I mean, you got to be doing some assignments seriously. you got to be doing performance evaluation tests. you got to be involved and dedicate some time if you want to pass the exams one time. If you want to pass the exams one time. So you can enroll today, right now, and, uh, you know, join our lectures and uh, study under my mentorship. You can download our mobile application, the Insurer Premium app, and also study there. Remember, like I said, if you have any questions that you would want me to answer, you can send us a short video of the question. So send us a video of your question via WhatsApp. The number is on your screen, 0545-887564. Exclusively WhatsApp. Please don't send a PDF document a question that we, I won't, I don't have time to do that. Send a video clip, very short question, and state clearly what your question is. But note that the video will be featured on all our online platforms, all our online platforms. So a video will be available online. And so make sure that when you're sending the video, it will be featured on all our online platforms. And so be mindful of that as well. So you can send me your questions, uh, 050, did I say 050? 0545-887564. Uh, if there are any inquiries that you have, something you would want to ask me, uh, you want to enroll in our courses or something like that, you can also reach us on 050-114-9296. You can also see that on your screen, 050-114-9296. I see some comments coming in. Let's see if I can uh, take some of them really quick. Um, what do we have? Um, Hussein Mustafa said, how do I get your book? Uh, you can call the number, you can WhatsApp or call the number. Uh, you'll be able to get whichever book that you want. We have financial reporting. We have corporate reporting. We have public sector accounting and finance uh, available. We have advanced audit and assurance. We have taxation also available. Our new taxation book will be available in Ghana, uh, possibly by next week or by middle of September, we are hoping that it will be available in Ghana, our new uh, taxation book. So you can send us a message on WhatsApp or call that number and delivery can be arranged nationwide there. Sela so said, Inshira, Nyami Inshira, Amen. Me Inshira, Inti Nyami Inshira, God bless you too. Sela so Timothy said, Inshira will always tell you the hard truth right in your face. You know, right? Because I mean, if I don't tell you, who will tell you? Some of you, you are too big. Some of you are too big to be advised. But, you know, me, I'll tell you, if you are big, you are big in your house. But in ICA, you are small. <laughs> so you need to put aside your ego. And I tell people this all the time. No matter who you are, as far as you are studying ICA, drop your ego. 
drop your status because you have to be a student to be a chartered accountant. So as far as you've not chartered yet, and that is what you want, drop all your ego, drop all your supposed success. Eh? All your supposed success. You su because suppose because in your eyes you are successful and that is good. So you drop all those things and be a student. Discipline, dedicate, follow instructions. You'll become successful as soon as possible. You feel me? So I will just tell you the way it has to be, you know? I don't know. You can work hard and still fail. You can work hard. And I don't know what you mean by work hard and still fail. Sometimes that happens. But again, if you fail, if you work hard and you fail, what it means is that you have a problem. Probably you have two problems, probably. So let me address this because some people tell me this insurance. I really work hard last semester, but I still failed. What do I have to do again? Oh, and I'm not saying this to you know laugh at people. I really uh, respect people, but uh, like should I work hard? But okay, so it means you have two problems. Two problems. If you work hard and you still fail the exam, you have two problems. So let's address them. Problem number one: application. Probably you know the text, but to apply the text to a question is your problem. Get a difference, well. You see, it's one thing to know the methods of uh, public-private partnership arrangements. Build, operate, transfer. Build, uh, transfer, and operate. Mow, maintain, and operate. SC service concession, like you know it. Now, last semester, you know what the man did in public sector? He brought scenarios, contracts. Then he asked students which methods of PPP he can be used. That is application. So you know the methods of public-private partnership arrangement that they are build, operate, and transfer, BO, BTO, MO, SE, and all that. You know them. But now the examiner has presented you with an illustration and say, and, and ask you and asking you which method would be appropriate for scenario I, 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 and I, I, I. It's called application. So if you work hard, but you still failed the exams, it means you know the text, but you lack application. Problem number one. Rose, are you with me? That is problem number one. You know the text but you lack application. So it means that we then have to deliver you from that. So once we know that is your problem, and before I can conclude that is your problem, we have to have some conversations. We need to talk. So then we can, okay, that's your problem. That's your problem. Because you see, what you may call hard work is not hard work. Sometimes you feel you have worked hard. You didn't do anything there. You didn't do anything there. Did you do anything? Be ah, did you do anything? Hard work, be ah, you're lying. So, sometimes people are like, Yo, I work hard. You didn't do anything, you didn't do anything. Be ah, go and sit down. Hard work, be ah. So, sometimes people say they have, but they didn't work hard. But if truly, like, you really work hard and you still fail, problem number one, like I said, lack of understanding, lack of application. That's problem number one. Problem number two, or reason number two why you failed, would be timing, timing or time management. So it's not that you cannot answer the questions, but you are a slow writer. You are a slow person in general. So it means that, that it will affect you. So before they say, by the time they say, oh, 15 minutes more, you've answered only three questions. And the rest of the questions there, you could answer them, but there is no time. There is no time. So that is why I tell you this. It's not just about studying, 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 studying. You must also understand the mechanism of time management. And that is what I told you in my three steps approach in the chat uh, when we're going through that thing. Time practice questions. It's important. So, Roche, you may work hard, but the reason why you will fail is two. One, you lack application. You cannot apply the text to the question. And that is the example I gave you. Last semester, public sector. Types of public-private partnership. That is what came. 
but the examiner brought scenarios and the examiner asked students which method of public-private partnership will be appropriate for the things listed. That is application of the text. So it is one thing to read the book and say, oh, I understand service concession. I understand maintain and operate. I, I, I understand build, operate, and transfer. I understand uh, build, own, and operate. But when the examiner asks you a question about how it apply, can you do it? The number two, timing. Timing. So these are the two things that I feel in my, in my experience over the years, when someone works hard and truly works hard and the person fails the exams, I know that these are the two things that is causing them. It's not that they don't know. They know, but number one, application is weak. Number two, they have problem with timing. And uh, nobody can deliver you. You can deliver yourself. All I will do is to provide you with the blueprints, the environments, the assistance, everything. But the onus lies on you. Because you see, you have to train your brain to respond in record time. You have to train your brain to be able to recollect things as fast as possible. I cannot do that for you. You don't need deliverance for that. Okay? You need to train your brain so that immediately you reach something like that you will remember the test and remember the principle and apply it in record time. In record time. And the only way you can train yourself to get to that level is through practicing questions and practicing questions at that time. That's the only way out. And that means you need a lot of time. But in Shira, I don't have a lot of time. I am married. I have 19 children. My husband eats fresh food every day. My husband said, I have to come and cook every day. And, and my work too, I go to work 8 a.m. By the time I get home, 9 p.m., I'm tired in Shiratu. And then Saturday too, I have to attend funeral. I have to go to wedding. Stop the IC and focus on your marriage. <laughs> All right. That's the real thing. But it means you need to sacrifice. If you really want to become a chartered accountant, you have to sacrifice. You have to discipline. It. Probably you have to, like I said, maybe reduce TV in a limited time. Don't watch TV. Don't go to that in any, any event. That is significant. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Hmm? Because you are there for everybody, your people, every time. Where is your goal? Where is your goal? Because some of you, your promotions, your success, the, the next level that God wants to take you to depends on you becoming a chartered accountant. And you know it. Because you know if you become a chartered accountant, boom, you can get a promotion. Boom, you can get more money. Boom, because you are there in the workplace and one small boy comes one small girl comes is a chartered accountant and boom they promote the guy and you are the one doing the whole job and you take it to this small boy to sign then every time you are bitter when you're in, in the vehicle going home or coming to work you are bitter now we didn't ask you to go and give birth or marry we didn't ask you to not let your brain work as fast as possible nobody asked you that you chose it so you can unwrite that it is your responsibility, and you can do it. All right? That's it. That's the truth. That's the truth. It's, you see, it doesn't give what you deserve. You only get what you fight for. Okay? You don't get what you deserve. Eh, I've worked for this company for 10 years. Eh, you have not promoted me. Now, but somebody did I see, you know, the person has been promoted. It's not, not fair. Really? Stated there to get a job, you have to be a, an ICA person. So you have to make a decision. The reason I'm speaking like this and talking to you like that is because I want you to plan yourself out the next 12 weeks so you can put yourself in the position. Really, I want you to be about 2022 exit.
Probably you've written the exam three times. You've written it six times. You've written it seven times. But you are still writing because you know you can become successful. You know that you can. You, you, you have to become a chartered accountant. And I want you to pass the Zemba examination. Maybe this is your first time you are going to write a, a certain paper. I want you to pass it in first time. But the only way that can happen is when you dedicate, discipline, focus, listen, and drop your ego. Okay? Drop your ego. You don't know this terrain. Drop your ego. Humble yourself. Be a student of life. No matter the success you think you have, no matter the car you think you drive, no matter the house you think you live in, it, didn't, it won't give you IC. It won't make you a chartered accountant. So all those things, put them aside. And be a student. Humble yourself. Listen to instructions. When you do that, drop your egotistic life and be a student, you will listen and also be able to become successful as fast as possible. That's it. That's it. So what do we have? Uh, please, what's the app name again? Insura Premium. The mobile application you can download on our, uh, on the Google Play Store, the App Store is Insura Premium. But I don't know if you're asking about the questions, how you send the questions. The questions will be sent via WhatsApp. This is the number for that. You can send your video questions. This will be there. You know, you know, our class will be mindful of that, and I will answer you that. Charles Amo said, uh, "Good work done. God bless you, Mo." Say, um, can you now save the recorded lecture videos in your app without the internet? Uh, we are, like I said, okay. This is Charles, right? We are we are working on that to find a solution uh, to that because I mean, uh, it's something that is. Uh, we've received requests for. So our team is working on that. We've still not reached any uh, conclusion so far. And there are a lot of reasons or a lot of things that has to be taken into consideration before that functionality can be available because of the way the application is designed, our website is designed and everything. So uh, the developers are still working around the clock and we are hoping that that may be available as soon as possible. AJ Gloria said, Inshira, thanks for the advice. Always a pleasure, AJ Gloria. Okay, I'll look. Rose, I hope you're okay now. So if you work hard and you fail, there are two reasons why. What did we say, Rose? Lack of application and timing. So Rose, maybe you have experienced that before. So now you have to do application. Okay, you have to do application. Attend lectures, um, study solve a lot of a lot of questions at the time and that will mean that next time if you go you won't fail okay Roche that's it about that Sela said what a wonderful session thank you very much Sela's Essen um Belinda Che Nimako said forgive me if I don't mention your name right okay but I like Belinda so let me stay with that Belinda said uh, why is the generic MBA not accepted for exemption what do you mean by generic MBA I don't know what is generic MBA. Because the based on the exemption policy of ICAG here, I mean there is a criteria for the MBA uh, to be accepted. I don't know if I can open that here. Yeah, the exemption policy. Have it here. Uh, master degree holders, accounting option. Holders of degrees. Holders of a master's degree, other than those specified above, will be granted exemption on a subject by subject uh, basis. Uh, yes, Belinda, so you are not in accounting. Yeah, you are not in accounting. The, you should give the exemption, Sissy. Sissy, like what? You've done, like you've done MBA in business administration, something like the banking and investment. No accounting is there. Or something, something banking and finance. No accounting is there. That one you'll be given exemption on subject per subject basis. That this year you you'll be required to send your transcripts. 
Okay, so when the ICA realizes that uh, you studied some papers uh, in your transcripts, then, you know, they will give you exemption on subject per subject basis. So if, you, if it is not in accounting, I mean, we can't give you exemption. No, ICA cannot do that. Okay, you did MBA in something, banking and finance. You want to come and take exemption for accounting. Oh, Belinda, shame, shame, shame on you. Shame. So that is the reason. So uh, once it is not an accounting thing, your transcript will be requested by the ICA. So as part of your registration, if you add your transcript, they will check your transcript. If there is anywhere you did something about maybe auditing, maybe you did some law, you did some, you know, uh, business management somewhere, then you'll get exemptions on subjects, a subject basis in that case. Samuel said, thanks for the advice. Okay. Uh, okay, not very accounting. Belinda said, <laughs> all right, mercy. <laughs> we can't give you exemption. Okay, you are welcome. Rose said, said is FR and tax, F6, a good combination? You want to write both in December? Uh, there are two independent papers not related. Um, so if you are taking them, know that they are independent papers on their own. It's uh, it's possible for you to, they are two independent papers. It's possible for you to write them. And uh, it means you need to work hard, definitely. Okay. Uh, the FR, I think I've explained to you the things that must be looked at. Uh, tomorrow I'll be on the live stream and we'll be looking at some other aspects of financial reporting and corporate reporting again tomorrow. So tomorrow join me on the call again. I'll provide you with the blueprint, the whole FR and CR uh, papers. Uh, and then that will provide you with the FR. With the tax, FCS, also there are some key issues that you need to uh, focus on. It's possible if you have time available December, it means you have September, October, November, so three months to go. And I hope you'll be attending lectures. And so if you're attending lectures anywhere uh, and you work hard on yourself, you practice a lot of questions uh, available, you, will, you should be able to pass them. It's, it's a good uh, combination to go with. Just that, like I said, they are two independent papers and they require a lot of work. They require a lot of work. Maybe... I don't know if you have done uh, law already, uh, but uh, maybe FR and law or tax and law could be a good thing because tax it has a lot of you know computational issues and principal principal issues, and FR also has a lot of computational and principal principal issues. So the workload in these two papers will be a lot. So maybe if you have not written law yet, you can or audit. Maybe you can pair audit or with one of these papers if you still have those papers available so maybe you can do audit and fr good because audit is purely reading purely principles then the fr some reading and calculation then you can combine that so when you do workings and you are tired you pick the audits and then you are reading and then you are listening that will help you more so if you have not done auditing and law I will advise that maybe you combine them with one of these. So you can do law and tax, auditing and FR. Now, the reason why auditing and FR will work is because there is ethics there. The accounting standards in FR, they are also applicable in auditing. So if you have not done auditing and you have not done law, then don't do this combination. Go for uh, auditing and FR instead. Let me know, Rose D, have you done auditing and law? Have you done auditing and law already? If you have not done auditing and law, then the best combination will be to do auditing and FR. Then you can law and tax. That's where the load uh, will be. Okay, so uh, Rose has given us a message. I'm left with FM, FR and tax. Okay, okay, then, then it's your call. There's no option available. There's no option available. So you can stay with the FR and the tax like that. But remember, it's require a lot of work. It will require a lot of work. So whatever time you think you have dedicated, you need 10 times of that. So it requires a lot of work so that you can put yourself in the position to be able to pass the exams. Charles Almo said, please, uh, is advanced audit and 
advanced taxation a good combination to go. Um, it's not something I will advise, but if you did principles of taxation, say, last semester. So, Charles, did you do principles of tax last semester? If you did principles of tax last semester, then because the principles of tax is fresh, doing advanced taxation is good. But if last semester you didn't do principles of taxation, then I would rather recommend that you do uh, audits, sorry, audits and then corporate reporting. But if last semester you did principles of taxation, then advanced taxation and audits will be okay. Then advanced taxation and audits will be okay. So Charles, let me know. Did you do principles of taxation last semester? Did you do principles of taxation last semester? If you did principles of taxation last semester, then we can, uh, that's yes, uh, with these two. But, but if you did not last semester, then probably, then you need to do corporate reporting and audit instead. You have to do corporate reporting and audit instead. So like I said, if you have sent us video of your questions to the number on your screen, 0545887564, a short video stating your questions. Remember, I will answer that uh, in uh, a video way, and that will be posted on our social media platforms. So remember that your questions, your videos will be featured on all our online platforms, so be mindful of that. Okay, so Amina Ama Sam said, good. Yeah, good evening, Amina. How are you doing? Send me a message or call me after the class. Okay. Charles said, No, please. I apply with MBA accounting. You know? Okay, when I'm a big boys, now I'm buying. You know? Okay, big boys. Yeah, so in your MBA, I don't think you did any, any tax paper BI like that. So don't do that. <laughs> don't do advanced audit and tax. Do corporate reporting and advanced audits. Okay, Charles, do corporate reporting and advance audits. That would be a better combination. Okay, because in your MBA, I don't know. Uh, the MBA, I don't know. You didn't do any tax paper BI like that. So even accounting, right? You didn't do accounting paper BI like that. If you start doing corporate reporting, you realize that, geez, the MBA, you were joking. So do corporate reporting and advance audits and assurance. That would be my best bet. The reason is that. There is ethics in corporate reporting. There is ethics in advanced audit and assurance. Number two, uh, the accounting standards that you will learn in corporate reporting, in advanced audit and assurance, when you are dealing with uh, audit rates, you are dealing with audit procedures and subsequent events, uh, going concern and those things, you will be applying the accounting standards knowledge as well. When you are testing materiality and all the risks of material misstatement, all those things, you will need the accounting standards knowledge. For that reason, corporate reporting and advanced audit and assurance will be your best bet uh, in that regard. So Charles, let me know if that uh, makes sense for you uh, in that case, because it will be more easier that way. It will be more easier in that way. Okay, so that is it about that. And uh, that is what we wanted to you know, bring to your notice this evening. My takeaway for you is this that note how the standards are interrelated, take time. If you have to rewatch this video, take time, go through this very well and understand the way the standards are connected. Once you understand the way the standards are connected, note that there are three things you must understand. Knowing the standards, knowing how, and then understanding the standards, meaning applying the standards and then also working uh, with time. With time. So at the end of the day, you must study. Please attend lectures. Don't be a lonely wolf. Don't be, oh, I'm a shark, I'm a shark, I'm a shark. Jaisa, spend some money and attend lectures, okay? Whatever be the case. If you, you cannot join us and study under my mentorship and study with us, there are a lot of teaching providers available. At least be part of a community. It helps a lot. It really helps a lot. It really helps a lot. So attend lectures, study, practice a lot of questions, and also practice questions on the time, and you will definitely become successful. I'll um, see some questions coming in. Amina said, oh, we'll call you. All right, Amina. What do we have? Bright Jikunu said, hello, sir. Is it compulsory to write all the four papers in part three? Nope. But this is it. 
you have to register for all the four papers in part three. You must register for all the four. But you are not supposed to write all the four. It's not compulsory. So my recommendation always to students is this. If you're a busy person, corporate executive, you have a lot of work, a lot of family issues, then do two, two. So that, yes, uh, somebody will say it's not fair. Why should I pay for four and write only two? So you want to spread your wings. So my advice is you can do two, two. So you can do corporate reporting and adv uh, advanced audit and assurance. So even though you are registering for all the four, you are just studying and focusing on the two, which you will write. And if you pass, then you take the other two papers. So it's not compulsory to write all the four papers, uh, but you have to register for all the four. So you decide, can you prepare for all the four and write and pass them? Or like my recommendation, you focus on just two papers and then you optimize yourself to be able to pass the exams. He said, okay, thanks, you're welcome. Um, how much is your corporate reporting book? The corporate reporting book is, I don't know, I think 135 cities, 135 Ghana cities. Uh, it's the volume one and volume two. So the two come together for 135 uh, Ghana cities. Uh, you can send us a message on WhatsApp. You're already in our loop. So send us a message on WhatsApp and uh, delivery can be arranged for you uh, in that case. Okay, so that's it about that, guys. And uh, this is, like I said, an operation 40 mark issue on the standards, but most importantly, on the various things that I shared with you. Okay, so if you implement these, you, you will make it. You will make it. Okay, I, I believe that you'll be able to, you should be able to pass the exams in December, but that will require a lot of work from you. But most importantly, make sure you attend lectures. Like I said, if you don't want to study under my mentorship, that's not okay. I'm not here to uh, force you to study under I'm my sure mentorship. If you, don't, if, you, if you can't study under my mentorship because of attempts and condition or whatever the heck, belong to a community. Check the ICA website. Look for a teaching provider. That will be, that'll be able to help you. Be part of a community. Study. But when, you, but when you're making those decisions, you have to be mindful of that uh, in the discussion. I don't know. ECG has taken my lights, but, you know. I'll be concluding very soon. We can continue. Again, I think my, my at least my face is up here. So um, definitely be part of a community because that will help you a lot to be able to prepare well for the exams and, you know, also pass the examination. And if so, can I defer the two and write the other two in next sitting? Yes, like I explained, you write two in December, uh, and then you register for all the four. Let's say you're writing in December 2022. You have to register for all the four, but you write two. Then if you pass the two, then in uh, April 2023, you take the other two. So it's not like you are deferring it. It's like you're just deciding that, yes, even though you have registered for it, you qualify to write it, you're not going to write it. Okay? You're not going to write it to increase your chances of today so bright uh that is it about that and that is what you must understand so that's it i'm going to be concluding around here today and uh god willing tomorrow i'll be coming your way the same time 4 30 p.m and we will be focusing tomorrow on the other issues in corporate reporting and financial reporting i'll discuss the other things that you must focus on the 60 percent left and how to generally study financial reporting and corporate reporting together. So tomorrow, join me on the live stream and let me provide you with another assistance uh, so you can prepare well for the examination. Remember, like I said, if there are any questions, or if you have any questions that you would want to ask, we are studying something and you want clarity on it, you can send us a short video on WhatsApp as well. The number is on your screen. And, uh, we will be able to assist you. Take care of ourselves and thanks for being on the stream. Thank you very much, everybody, you guys, for joining me. Really, really grateful for you guys. Uh, Belinda said, thank you, thank you, really good. Thank you to Belinda for joining us. So catch me same time tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. as we look at the rest of the 60% the of 
cooperative financial reporting they give you the blueprint of how to study all of them together so you can know the key issues to focus on to increase your chances of passing the examination thank you for joining us and then for those of you who shared our videos and gave us a thumbs up god richly bless you and thank you very much for the support and i'll catch you same time tomorrow at 4 30 p.m as we continue with our discussion stay safe and stay blessed bye-bye